ladies, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing basically a try on of a lot of new products that I have grabbed in the past couple like two weeks. I've been getting things here and there and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna try them all on all at once. Instead of doing another haul video or this or that, I figured I would just show you guys what I got, what I love, what I don't, yada yada. So if you'd like to see how I created this full face look, and to see if I like the products I got, just keep watching. The first new thing I'm going to be trying out is this new YSL foundation, and this is called the Radiance Awakening Foundation, and I am in the shade BD10 Warm Porcelain. This is supposed to be like a radiant foundation. From what I've read, it's not like really luminous, but pretty. And it is supposed to have pretty good coverage, so we'll see. I'm trying to kind of curious to see if it's thick or not on the face. I was playing around at Sephora and I pumped one on my hand. I was like, hmm, this is interesting. So I grabbed this guy and it comes with a pump, so I'm just gonna shake it up just a little bit just because I feel like doing that with your foundations is probably a good thing. So if they've been sitting around for a little bit, if they separated, even though this is brand new, I don't know how long it's been sitting at Sephora. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take two pumps on my Petri dish. And then I'm going to go in with the new Beauty Blender Nude. I don't know why I even cared about this, but I don't know, no, I've only used the black one and I just don't like pink, so I don't do pink. So when they came out with the nude one, I was like, hmm, let me grab that one. I do already have all my primers on, but I didn't feel like doing it on camera, but I'll list them down below. Mmm, this smells good. YSL foundations just smell really nice. I've heard some people say that the Nude Beauty Blender, they didn't like the texture on it. Now, remember, I've never used the pink one, but it's definitely different than the black one, but I, I don't know, I like it. Probably wouldn't have even noticed very much if someone hadn't said something to me about it. Applies the foundation really nicely. And so far, this looks really good. So here's one full layer of the foundation, and I really like it. I wouldn't say it's like particularly radiant. I do see like a soft glow. It's kind of like a matte satin finish, probably more satin because it's not matte. And it does have a little bit of stickiness to the touch, but I always set my foundations with powder anyway. But I like this. It kind of reminds me of the Dior Star. So if you're a fan of that foundation, you'll probably like this one. And I definitely think that if I put a second layer on this, it would it would be full on coverage, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to put on my concealer. Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer per usual. I looked to see if I could find a concealer that like made me want to buy it and try something new. And I just couldn't find anything. Mm, I looked at the rainforest of the sea, whatever that one is, the something of the sea, something like that from <laughs> um, Tarte, but it was too liquidy and I was like, mm, I don't know how I feel about that. So I didn't find anything that screamed, you know, pick me up, take me home. So I didn't, I stuck with this guy. I have a pimple coming up right here. What the hell? And it hurts so bad, but it doesn't have a head on it yet. It's just like this bump. Oh. I'm telling you guys, I love the finish on this foundation. Like, I'm impressed. And yeah, normally I don't like this style anymore. I really have been leaning towards those liquidy foundations. And this one's really pretty. Um, I'm going to go in with Diffused Light from Hourglass only because when I have a breakout, I find I don't like to be as bright underneath the eye because I feel like it shows it more. So I'm just going to go in with this powder and it's still really nice and bright, but it's just not as bright as Ethereal Light. The more I use this sponge though, I'm thinking I kind of like the texture on it more than even the black one. Dare I say that. There's just something about it. It feels, I don't know, it feels like squishier or something. I don't know, but I like it. So I'm going in with my La Mer powder. Yeah, I, the powder. 
this is a new product for me, but I, it's not so new that I haven't used it. Obviously I'm like flipping obsessed. And I got this new brush. This is the Zach Posen Kabuki. This is limited edition, but you can get this Kabuki brush anytime at MAC. It just won't be in this special packaging. And I just got it because it's really big and fluffy and I can press in this powder really quickly and buff where I need to. It's super soft and has green bristles. Like, I love this thing. I always wanted the Kabuki brush for MAC, but I never thought of anything that I would actually use it for because I don't really, back then I didn't really use the translucent powders. I didn't want it for bronzer and I didn't use like powder foundations and stuff, all the things that I would recommend it for. But now I've got a reason to use it and I like it. I'm gonna bronze using my Luminous Bronze Light from Hourglass and my MAC 135. And I'm just going to buff this into the skin. Like, Lord, this, this foundation is so nice. It looks really good with that powder and bronzer over top too. Now it's looking a little bit more luminous than it did. Granted, the powder and the bronzer I'm using is luminous, but the combination's really, really nice. I keep getting comments about the Tom Ford Traceless Perfecting Foundation. Everyone asking me if I've used it. Now I used the, it's a thicker one, I guess. I don't know which one it is. If it's the traceless one, I'm not buying it. Like it's horrible. <laughs> but if it's not, because you guys keep on asking me, I'm going to grab that foundation and try it out. Unless it's the one I tried because the one I tried, mm -mm, made me look old and gross. But I'm gonna check it out. And if it's not the one that I've already tried, I am going to grab it for you guys. Magic trick, brows are done, ha. Now I'm gonna move on to my eyes and I have two new palettes. Both of these are from MAC and I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use. This one right here, okay, this is not necessarily new to Nordstrom because Nordstrom has had this, but this is new in the MAC store and this is the Amelo Moderns times 15 and these have dropped in price, you guys, to $65. And pro discount is applicable. Like, really? And then the pans, like if you were to buy individual pans, they're $6 now. Just saying, and Mac is the freaking bomb.com with shadows. They just are, I've always loved them. And this is the Pastel Times Nine. So I've got both of these guys, and I think I'm gonna go with this one. And by the way, this one is now 32 instead of 40, so yes. So I'm first going to pick up Orb on a MAC 252 and pop this right up at the brow bone. And I have already primed my lids. I used MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. I think I'm also going to take that and go all over my lid. I don't think I want anything shimmery on my lid today. We'll see if that changes. But I'm just patting this on. And I'm adding a few layers so it's a little bit more bright. You can use a MAC 242 as well. This one just get it, gets it done a little faster because it's bigger. Now, Soft Brown is in this palette, so I'm going to use that. It is one of my favorite transition shades of all time. So I'm grabbing that on a Sephora Pro Tapered Crease Brush, going directly into the crease first, back and forth, and then working the product upward and then going in circular motion so that it's buffed out and you have no harsh lines. I'm not going to do liner today, so I'm making sure that I get it right here as well so that when I go underneath, it's all connected. I'm also making sure I'm dragging the extra out kind of like an AV right here because I do want it to be a little smoky on the edge. If you want to keep your eye more rounded, then don't drag it out, but I like to elongate a little bit. And I mainly only do that with the transition shade so that it's not like crazy. But some eye shapes, be careful of that because it's not as flattering. And if you're trying to give your eye a lifted look, don't bring it down too far. Switching over to a MAC 217, I'm going to grab a cork and I'm going to put this right directly into the crease and I'm going to build up this product a bit. Back and forth first and then 
Again, I have a harder time doing circular motions with this, but I try. I'm just kind of pushing the product up and angling my brush. Instead of going like this to go directly into the crease, I'm pushing it up like this, and bringing my brush down and angling this part up. And that helps to blend it out. And if you're having troubles being able to see your crease color when you open up your eye, try keeping your eye open and going right above it, then you can see the product a little bit better. And if you're looking down too much, you're gonna go directly into the crease, and you're gonna open up your eye, and you're not gonna see the shadow, so a little tip is just to keep your eye open and be able to see where exactly you're putting the product. Back in with the other brush and just going right over the edge of that, not adding any color, just merging the two shades together a little bit more seamlessly. Now I'm going to grab a MAC 221 because it's a little bit more precise and I'm going to grab this kind of purpley gray shade and I'm going to go again directly into the crease. This time I'm not going to be bringing this up so much so I'm going back and forth windshield wiper motions first to deposit the color and then tiny little circular motions to blend it out. And then I'm going to add a little bit more right in this outer V right here to bring it in and kind of blend the lid color and this outer color together. I'm going to repeat these steps on the lower lash line. So I'm gonna go in first with soft brown on my NARS pencil brush and this one's gonna be drugged down the furthest. So I'll start at the lower lash line and then bring the extra product a little further down. If you don't like for your shadow to go as far down, just don't bring it that far down. But I do because it really opens up the eye and smokes it out some. Next in with cork and a little closer to the lash line this time, not dragging it down so far and do not cover up your soft brown all the way. And then persuade just on the outer corner here and connecting it to where we have it smoked out. Oh, I grabbed carbon. Connecting it right here so that it wraps around the eye really nicely. Now I'm gonna take a clean sponge and just clean up the edge right here, and that'll bring some of the product up, make it look a little bit more sharp, but not like, like you went with tape or something and made it super clean, which there's nothing wrong with that, I just don't want it today. Now I'm gonna go in with black track and just do a thin line across the lashes to ground them, and then I'm going to put on some New Velour Lashes. Now, I didn't really care for the uh, mink ones or whatever they are because every time I would take them off, there would be hair everywhere. Like, I did not get the amount of use that you should have for $35 lashes, but then I saw these, and these are silk, and the name of these are... Fluffin' Cool, <laughs> that's kind of a cute name. So I figured that I would give these a shot and see if I got more wear and they didn't fall apart as easily. So I'm going to pop these on as well and I'll be back. So I've got the lashes on. I think that they are super pretty. I tested them by literally pulling them out by the lashes, like the actual like little hairs, because I wanted to see if I pulled them, like I do most of my lashes, <laughs> if the hairs would come out and they didn't. So. Thank goodness, I feel good about these. And then I will say though, that if you are a beginner to lashes, don't, don't try these until you've perfected the art because these things do feel like a little heavy on the eyes and they are a bitch to put on. Like they are a brat, that they just are. So um, I do like them though. I like how they kind of, they wing out, like all the lashes go this way and I kind of thought that they were weird in the package but I was like, eh, I'm gonna try them and I, I like them. So I definitely am not up, not mad at this and they're $10 cheaper than the mink ones or whatever they are. So, and they feel very, very soft. They're like, the, the lashes themselves aren't stiff. So I like these. Now I'm gonna move on to blush, and for that I grabbed this. This is the Estee Lauder Edit. Again, it's Estee Lauder, so it's just a new line from them. And I was feeling these blushes, and they felt so good. I had two, had this one and then a coral one. I was like, I do not need another coral blush. So I put it back, 
I was like, calm down. And I figured I would at least test the formula before I jumped into that. So this is what the package looks like. It's really pretty. And this one is called, they're called like the Barest Blush. And this one is number one, First Lover. It looks like this. It has like this little stamp of gold right here, but I'm pretty sure that's just an overspray. So I'm going to grab my Tom Ford brush. And I'm gonna pop this on my cheekies. Yeah, that it's coming off the, it's definitely an overspray. Oh, this is nice. Did not put much on my brush. I wanted to see how pigment it, pigmented it was first. And I'm just going on the cheeks. Yeah, that's really, really pretty. That's a great nude blush. I like this color a lot. Oh, that's really, really pretty. I like this. Watch out, coral blush. Here I come. <laughs> I'm gonna add in my contour, and I'm going to use the Marc Jacobs number 40 Mirage filter, and I'm using this one just because I really need to go ahead and use it, get it over with, finish it off so I can have more room in my collection. I'm just going to softly put this here, up here, and I'm using the Real Techniques contour brush. Now I'm gonna do some bakage to clean that up. I'm using the MAC Set Powder and just like one of these little triangular sponges. I'm just gonna go right underneath it. So while I'm letting that sit and bake, I'm going to use a new, another new product, and this is the Bite Amuse something. I'm, I'm just gonna list this down. And I've heard nothing but good things about this, so I grabbed one of these. This is in Sugar Cane. I wanted to get a color that I have not got in my collection or ones that I don't use all the time because there's a lot of pretty colors, but I don't need 10 of the same shade, so even if it's a different formula. So I got sugar cane. This is not something I would ever grab. This is a pink shade here. The formula on this, is, it just feels so good, swatched, and it smells amazing. Like Bite Beauty, you can literally just eat this because it is a food grade material, or ingredients, it's material. We're putting some material on your lips. But I'm gonna pop this on and let you guys know how I feel about that. Mm, that just glides on. So I am 100% not used to seeing this color on my lips. But this might be like my new favorite formula. I don't even have lip primer on. This feels so good. So depending on how this lasts through the day and if it dries out my lips or not, this could be so good. I love the way this feels on my lips. It's really pigmented. Mm, but it feels good. Yeah, and you guys let me know if we like this color on me or not. I did this eye look and didn't use as many of the colors in the palette because I knew I was gonna be putting on this lip, so I didn't want it to be like overwhelming. But let's go ahead and dust off this bakage. So I'm dusting this off, and I'm also going to blend out everything else in the process. And then I always go back in with no extra product and just make it to where it's not as harsh of a line and blend it out just a tad bit. Now I picked up another one of the limited edition shades. This is a beauty powder and it is called Peach Blossom. It is still available online. So if we love this, you can go grab it, but it is limited edition, so if you want it, get it now. Um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this on my skin or not, so we are about to find out. It's this really pretty pinky shade, but it has like a silver reflect to it, and I'm going to use the Wayne Goss number three, and hope I don't just mess up my makeup. Okay, okay, this isn't bad. I'm not mad at it. Yeah. Put a little bit on my nose. Yeah, that's cute. I didn't know if it was gonna be too dark on me because the people I saw wearing it were darker than I am and it looked really good. But I wasn't sure on me and I like it. So now I'm just gonna tap that with the Beauty Blender and buff it into my skin some. 
Spray my Beauty Blender with some Fix Plus, squeeze it in there, and then I'm going to tap off the extra so it's not super duper wet on my hand here. And then tap that into the skin and it really helps it to melt in. So that's it, you guys. I'm actually really happy with everything that I got that was new. I love this foundation. This lipstick is probably my favorite find, and I will let you guys know if something happens to change my mind, if this foundation got super shiny on me, or if the lipstick didn't last very long, or I get dried out because I do not have my primer underneath, I will tell you guys down below. If you don't see anything, that means I'm still happy. Please let me know if you like this kind of video so as I grab things randomly, I can kind of do this, you know, show you guys a lot of different products all at once. So if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please do so, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.